I'm going to kick things off here with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. On both left and right sides, you can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average chart from way back in 1915. The left side displays the main count and the right side displays the alternate count. The reason why I did this is because awareness is a good thing to possess when making an intelligent decision. So let's see which one has the right look. Alright, so on the left side I am counting Dow Jones Industrial Average as an impulse with an extension in the super cycle wave free, this purple free right here. Now, the wave count is counted basically uh, with a grand super cycle wave red one, um, basically on the top, uh, on the on the top before the Great Recession. So uh, let's say from um, 19, uh, 1929, this topped out, and uh, until 1932 we had the Great Depression in wave two grand super cycle wave two red, and uh, since then. Let's say Dow Jones started a bull market, yeah? So we have super cycle wave one purple, super cycle wave two purple, and then counting uh, the extension in cycle waves. So we have wave one black here, wave two complex structure right here, very, very deep retracement, so typically for a, typical for a wave two, sorry. And then the extension, obviously, in wave three, one, two, three, four, five. And then, of course, we had another set of, um, of re recessions, let's say, and market contractions. This is basically, let's see, in, um, in wave three top here, we had the dot-com bubble. Uh, and then all the way on the top right here in this wave B, then we started this wave C in wave four for... Uh, the recession 2007-2008, uh, and by the way, this vertical gray lines represent recessions or crashes. Yeah. So as you can see, um, every basically there's the market contracts uh, with this type of uh, great falls uh, in cycles as well. So let's say, for instance, time-wise, every um, every eight to ten years there would be some sort of contraction. Now, not to say that this is coming really fast or something like that, just that the market tends to contract and there is a cycle with recessions as well. This is what I'm trying to tell you here. Now, the point is that we are, uh, we basically, we basically started uh, since 2000, uh, 2009, 2008, 2009, basically we started this bull market, yeah? And this is what we're going to take a look at because this wave five, cycle wave five, is pretty much com coming to an end in my personal opinion. So therefore, it would also end super cycle wave three. Now, if this would be correct, then of course we would expect super cycle wave four contraction to end somewhere around the cycle wave four uh, territory, yeah? according to the Elliott wave rules, one basically a wave four would typically end in the price action territory of a previous uh, four of a lesser degree. And the lesser degree is the cycle wave four within this three. Okay, so this is it for, uh, this is basically it for the uh, main count, let's say counting it as an impulse. As you can see, wave four here does not uh, overlap with wave one. So therefore, this wave count could be correct. Now, however, there is uh, an alternative, yeah, which is basically the right side. So I'm going to switch to the right side so we can actually see if we were to count this differently, how would we count it, yeah? So as an alternate count on the right side, we would, we would count this as an ABC with an ending diagonal in the C grand super cycle C, which is this red C right here. So therefore, let's say this would, this would basically pan out, uh, this would be correct as well, let's say, under one point. So if we were to count this as, a, as an A and then the B in the Great Recession, yeah, in the Great, uh, sorry, Great Depression, then we would 
we would basically start this as an ABC, yeah, within the one uh, for the ending diagonal, for the desired ending diagonal. And you can actually see that the lines, the, the trend, the, the contracting uh, lines, the, um, the converging lines are panning out pretty nicely here. So we could have this scenario as well. The, what I'm trying to explain here is basically that Regardless of how you look at this uh, structure, how you count it, some wave five would typically end in this diagonal, yeah. So there is something coming. That's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm seeing on the charts. There is a contraction possibly coming. Not to say that you should uh, obviously. Not to say that you should follow my my words or something. Everybody, you know, we're all grown men here, so we can do. Everybody is entitled to make their own decisions. What what I'm actually sharing with you is my personal opinion. And as I said, I could be right, but I could also be wrong. So it's it's up to you to decide which view uh, you're going to apply. So let's say let's take it from uh, from the bottom here. Let's see if we can count this. Uh, grand super cycle C wave correctly. So we have an, a wave, uh, wave A, then uh, a zigzag in wave B. <clears throat> and then we would start counting the uh, C wave in a basically in an ending diagonal as well. So we have one, two, three, all the way up top here, four, and then five. Yeah, so we, let's say for instance we have super cycle wave one and then contraction in wave two in a complex structure W, X, A, B, C, which we would end Y, also ending super cycle wave two. And then we would start wave uh, three, super cycle wave three purple right here, same count, basically topping out in uh, on the dot com bubble. And then A, B, C, notice basically the uh, law of alternation here. So we have a basically a complex contraction here yeah but also in ABC here so a simple structure right here in the super cycle wave 4 so the law of alternation kind of agrees with this yeah but also agrees with the left side so we have basically until now both wave counts would be uh, correct now the only thing that it's obviously needed for the for for this wave count to pan out and complete super cycle wave five would be obviously five cycle waves in this uh, in this bull run right here yeah and the way I'm looking at things on the real time uh, charts is that this is possibly not ending um, very very soon although there are you know many people are uh, speaking. Um, important people I would say um, so I mean solid sources are speaking that uh, are actually saying that a market contraction could occur very very soon sometime this year in 2018 now not pretty sure about that so far um, the way I'm looking at these things and I will I will actually show you on my charts is I'm counting I'm counting this as a contraction in the four and the extension in wave five, which it's which is still panning out. Now, the way I'm looking at things is a contraction, yeah, a, a possible contraction, and then the final run, because uh, in a ending diagonal scenario, we we would need to uh, have an overthrow. Yeah, we need to basically go through this line and then reverse and by the way the low, the way things look we still have i mean dow jones is currently trading um, um let's see dow jones is currently trading around uh, 25800 close to 26000 yeah so 26000 is somewhere around here and not pretty much um, we're not really there yet yeah so patience patience is required however a contraction would be expected and that's exactly what I'm going to show you uh, later on so let's jump on the charts here let's uh, finish up with the Dow Jones and then we're going to switch to S&P 500 and then of course we're going to take a look at uh, uh, a forex pair uh, most probably euro usd and some a quick look at others and then uh, metals uh, i would say gold would be appropriate and energy sector we're going to take a look at um, w wti 
crude oil and then we're going to finish up with uh, with bitcoin as the cryptocurrency